If you've never worked with air dry clay, but you've worked with Play Doh, you've worked with air dry clay. Play Doh is a kid friendly version of air dry clay. It can be molded and shaped. It can be rolled out and it can stick to itself or it can easily be broken apart. In order to smooth out edges, your fingers might not always do the trick. So you might need some oil. Baby oil works great. And Q-tips for the blending. But let's take a look at the things that we can do with air dry clay. Not sponsored by Crayola's Model Magic, but if Crayola wants to, please do so. In order for a young child to open this without scissors, you can see it's kind of like a potato chip bag. Find the end that's sticking out, pull it opposite the long end, and then you'll open it in no time. To take the clay out, it can stick to itself. So dab it on the inside of the container to get out the little bits that are stuck behind. Working with fine motor skills is important to develop good occupational therapeutic muscles. Mold it and shape it as you wish. First, protect your placemat this can be as easy as buying a dollar store placemat or cardstock or anything that can be wiped off. You can even use plastic wrap. For basic steps or fine motor skills, you can squish it, shape it, bend it, and turn it into anything that you want. The next step, you're going to need a tool. From my Play-Doh set, I have a rolling pin. You're going to take the rolling pin with both hands and push firmly down and roll out, pick up, come back, and repeat. You can turn the paper and roll out. But wait! This slab has a part that's sort of tiny on one side and sort of fat on the other. There's an easy fix for that. If I want it thicker, I can use equal size boards like this. These happen to be paint stirring sticks from Lowe's, but you can use anything that matches. Then roll on top of your guard and it should be an even amount. If you don't have paint stirring sticks, but you have books that are the same size, that would work too. You can also use Chinese chopsticks. These should be the same size and we'll get you the same thickness. There's your first slab. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use any round object like a fat marker. Here are my two options. Take a look at them closely. Which one looks like it would be the best choice? This one has a fun top. If you turn it, it goes out, 
comes back in and goes out again. And it has a fun bottom that can be used for dipping. Or this one here, the Crayola Overwriter, not sponsored. It's straight all around, has a boring circle top and a boring circle bottom. This is the one you would want to use because it's a lot like our flat rolling pin. So we take our clay and with both hands flatten out and move your hands with the rolling pin. Don't curl your fingers. That'll make it hard to use the tool. The last option I have for rolling out thin pieces is my pasta maker. That is for individual kinds of pasta or rolls of clay. Here is my handle to crank it out and my clamp to hold it onto the table. Insert the crank and make sure it is clear of anything that will stop it. You may need a little oil to get things moving. You can take your thin piece, place it in the machine, and roll it. until you get a very thin piece of clay. Now, you can treat it like it's Play-Doh again. The top cart gets fed into these grooves. Then, you take your thin dough, put it in the openings, and crank it out. And when you're all done, you have french fries. The next thing that we can do with our slab of clay is we can make textures with it. That means that our hands can feel the different shapes. This is a net that I got from a bag of onions. If I take that and I roll it across the top of my clay, you can see little bumps all over the piece of clay. Same thing with my oranges. What about my bubble wrap? With this, you'll have to be a little bit more delicate so you don't pop all the bubbles. Now you can see the bigger holes. I have a doily with all that intricate lace work. I can take just the doily part press firmly And you can see the doily impressions. This might have to be done a little bit stronger for the small details. And last, I have some texture plates. These plates were specifically designed to show texture in clay. This one shows a forest of leaves. Take your slab of clay, find the area of the slab that you want it to be printed on, put that on the bottom, 
and roll. Another technique is when you take your clay and you make it into a ball. Now sure, you can squeeze it into the shape of a ball, but that doesn't look very ball shaped. So with a flat palm, you can put your palms together and roll around, smoothing it as you go, or put your fa um, flat palm on a table over the ball and roll it around. And pretty soon, you will have a smooth ball. You can get rid of the lines with some baby oil. Next, we're going to make a snake. With a new piece of clay, it's a lot softer and more malleable or able to be moved around and squished. If you want to make a snake, sure, just like the ball, you can squeeze it between two hands and it kind of looks like a snake, but more like a slug. Let's round it out and make it more even with two palms, just like you had your rolling pin, flat, roll the clay out, up and down, opening your fingers as you go. Notice how my snake is getting longer because I'm taking my fingers and I'm opening them as I go. there is my snake. Again, you can use oil to smooth out that line. Now, let's cut my snake in half. And yes, these are regular scissors, not Play-Doh scissors. Now I have two snakes. If I want to make a coil, take one end and wrap the snake around itself over and over, kind of like a Swiss roll cake. And there you have one We can do it on both sides. There's my middle point. And there's two. You can even take some more. And make a donut. If your donut's hole is too large, you can close it up into a ball, flatten it to a slab, and pinch a hole in the center. Pull the center towards the outside to make your hole larger and smoother. 
there's your donut. All of these styles can be used in making a pinch pot. Start with your slab base. Pinch to round out the bottom. Make a snake. And any combination you want. There's one coil. Here's an arch. We can take our strings and twist them. And we can take a string and braid it. And there you have a coil pot. Also, with these same skills, you can make your coils and turn them into love bugs. The love bug I'm making here is a butterfly. I made my butterfly wings and the dots for the antennae. Then, I made a large coil and a reverse coil. Your only limits are your imagination.